Corinne Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, was just being interviewed on a radio station in Charlotte. She was asked a question, I don't think a provocative question, I don't think a, an unfair question, I think she was asked a very fair and pertinent question that she didn't like, so she ran away. I told a number of people that I was talking to you today, that it was interesting though, they all said, would you please just ask her? Does the president have dementia? And so before I move on from that, does he? That, Mark, Mark, I can't even believe you're asking me this question. That is a credibly offensive question to ask. But you know uh, people is, ask it. Uh, wait, oh, let me, no, 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 no. You, Mark, you, 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 you took, you're taking us down this rabbit hole. Let me, uh, let me, uh, let me be very clear about this. Uh, for the past several years, the president's physician, has laid out very in a comprehensive way uh, the president's health. We see we are in a different place than we were a year ago on gas prices, uh, eggs, milk, uh, seafood products, uh, all the important uh, groceries. Those costs have gone down because of what this president has been able to do. And, th- and with that, thank you so much, Mark. Have an amazing, amazing day. Wow. Wow. And she hung up. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely brutal in a few ways. It shows how bad Corrine Jean-Pierre is at this job. One, she needs to expect this question. This is not just the question of some shock jocks on the radio. Do those guys sound like shock jocks to you? No, they sound like ordinary radio hosts who are asking a question that everyone is asking around the world because it appears that Joe Biden is in cognitive decline. It looks like he's got dementia. She needs an answer to that. She doesn't have an answer to that. She says, what? I am so offended. I, uh, okay, well, let me be totally clear. Uh, <laughs> she pauses because she doesn't have an answer to it. So terrible preparation from Corrine Jean-Pierre. Then she says, his doctors say it's fine. Okay, nobody really believes that that means anything, though. And then she doesn't even have the good sense to hang up at that point. She, she would have been well within her rights to say, you know, that is an outrageous question, deeply offensive. You're clearly just trying to take pot shots at the president who's been a very capable president, whose doctor has cleared him uh, as, as being cognitively very healthy many, many times. I, I can see what this is. If you want to have a comedy show roast, that's fine. But don't, don't you know, diminish the, the dignity of the president of the United States. I'll talk to you later, sir. Hang up the phone. There, at least, there would have been some motivation for it. It, probably Democrats would have defended her in that. But what she does here is she says, no, no, he's fine. He's definitely doesn't have dementia or whatever. And then she goes on. I cut out part of the middle because it was too long. She goes on for two minutes talking about egg prices or whatever. And then I'm sure people off camera are in, in the White House are saying to her, get off the line. You're blowing it. What are you doing? And then she says, okay, and with that, uh, I'm just going to, okay, have a good day. Hang up. It's so weak. And, and, The only defense of her, the only defense of the White House I can muster is they can't figure out an answer for the dementia question. They can't figure it out because he's obviously in massive cognitive decline and everybody sees it. And the White House has been caught on hot mics admitting it. Remember when James O'Keefe went on that set up investigative journalist date with some dude in the White House? the cybersecurity director. And the cybersecurity director said, yeah, we all know it. We all know the guy's in decline, but we can't get him off the ticket. Ah, oh, it's so frustrating. Yeah, I'm sure everybody in the White House, including Karine Jean-Pierre, is saying that. So what do you do? What do you do? You watch the polls go up and up and up for Trump. Great news for us, very bad news for him. A writer for The Atlantic, Josh Barrow, has just come out and said that Sonia Sotomayor, the... Obama appointee, liberal justice on the Supreme Court, should retire now. And the article is basically exactly what you would expect. What he writes in there is not all that interesting. The fact that he wrote it, the fact that The Atlantic published it, is very interesting. This kind of article, and you're going to see more of them as November approaches, this tells me the Democrats are not confident that Biden is going to win. If the fix were totally in, if the Democrats felt that they had enough juice between the polls and the ballot harvesting and the this and the that to get them over the finish line in November, they would not be calling on Sotomayor to resign. 
She's got a few good years left in her. She's one of the most far left justices on the court. So they should, they should want to keep her in. Joe Biden, who knows what Joe Biden's going to do. Uh, they don't think that Biden is a shoe in They probably don't even think that he's likely to win re-election. So they want Sotomayor to retire now. I, I don't think she will. I, 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 frankly, I just don't think there's even time for that at this point. Probably, probably the, this, the Republican senators could hold it up. Maybe, it's a, it's a little bit unclear because the Democrats do officially control the Senate. Uh, but it's just so close in the election year. There could be some chicanery to gum that up, so it's probably too late. Uh, but the Democrats are desperate because they don't know they don't know what else to do. And if Trump wins again, who who are the justices who are going to retire? I don't know. S- Sotomayor is is no spring chicken. Clarence Thomas is somewhat elderly, but uh, that guy I think is is going to stay in office until he's gone. I think you're going to have to carry him out, uh, you know, stiff as a board. Uh, but you you could see a world in which all of a sudden you now have you can't call it a, a six vote conservative majority Supreme Court because John Roberts is kind of a squish. So let's call it right now five to three to a squish. Maybe it becomes six. Maybe it becomes seven. Who knows? Big big stakes on the court, which we haven't even really talked about for 2024. Now, speaking of the consequences of Supreme Court decisions. There's a Daily Wire investigation. This is from Leaf Lemahieu. Uh, really worth checking out. It's about a thousand pages long. How a leftist network of websites floods red states with abortion pills with no consequences. Uh, subheader websites advertise foreign abortion pills to abortion-seeking women across the country no matter what. Really, really important uh, investigation. We now know, as I've mentioned on the show a couple times recently, the majority of abortions are not surgical. The majority of abortions take place when people take a poison pill and it kills their kid. The liberals are trying to liberalize access to the abortion pill. There's a case before the Supreme Court right now on this very topic. Uh, but this carries major risks. Obviously, to the babies, it's going to result in a lot more babies being killed. Uh, it poses risks to the women because uh, these these pills are not very well regulated. They're quite dangerous, actually, especially when you're buying these pills from un- unknown places, from unknown doctors. Uh, you know, women can be seriously injured or even killed. And But then f- furthermore, the pills pose a major threat to the political order because r- right now, after the Dobbs decision, states have the right to regulate or even ab- abolish and outlaw abortion. They have the right to do that, obviously. There's no provision of the U.S. Constitution that says women have the right to kill their kids. It's, uh, it's nowhere in there. No one even pretended it was in there until Roe versus Wade in 1973, and now that's been overruled. It was totally a lie. Uh, so if it's the case that the states have the right to regulate abortion, then the states have the right and the obligation to regulate these drugs. But if these drugs are just being bought on the internet from some other state, or from some other country, well, then the states have to really get involved. And I know that conservatives in recent decades have been terrified of regulation. They said, no, 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 we don't want to give the government any more power. We need to let the free market sort this out. Uh Uh-uh. No, that's not true, especially when we're talking about poison specifically intended to murder babies, which might have the side effect of killing mothers as well, and, and certainly would have the side effect of killing the the right of the people to govern themselves in these states. Really, really horrifying stories in this report. Strongly recommend you check it out over at dailywire.com right now. And then once you read it, I strongly recommend you write to your governor, your state representatives, and uh, demand that they regulate this immediately. And, and we can also hope and pray that the Supreme Court rules correctly to, to further restrict the abortion drug at the federal level. That was good. <laughs> and we all know it. Okay. We all agree, I think. So if you want more of those clips, you got to ring that bell. Subscribe to the Michael Knowles YouTube channel, and then we'll see you next time.